Today I will show you how to create a very basic closed asset for UDK. To do that, just create a mesh in any 3D program you like. Then make sure that you have many vertices, because when you have more vertices, it will look much better. So in Blender you have to press V and then click on to subdivide. And do this sometimes. Like this here. So that's enough vertices to make it look real. Then connect the two meshes, so in my case the the cylinder with the plane, Control J, and now we can start. So now we have to add a bone, so go to add, amateur, single bone. Then scale this bone up, like this here, and go into the edit mode. Now in the edit mode press E to extrude it and create the second bone, like this here. Now go back into the object mode and place all bones into the mesh. So like this. Now select the mesh, then select the amateur and press Ctrl P and then choose with automatic weights. Now we have to make the vertex group. So go into your amateur and click on to your mesh in the amateur. Then go to this little tab here. It's called um, Display Edit tab. And here you can see our two bones. Now we have to go into the edit mode. And there we have to create our vertex groups. So select the first bone, click onto it, press select. Then click on to remove and deselect everything. Oops. Then click onto the second bone and do the same. Remove and deselect everything. Now select the first bone again. So click onto it and select. And then select the part that should be static. So that shouldn't move. In my case, the upper part. So we we'll press C now to go into the wireframe mode, and then I will choose the upper part here. This part here shouldn't move. And then press onto assign. And deselect everything. Now click onto the bone tool, click select, and then choose the rest. So the part that should be dynamic. So in my case, this part here. And assign. And that's it. Now check the vertex groups, this here and this here. And that's good. Now we're finished. Just export this mesh now. So go to File, Export, Autodesk FX, Desktop, then choose Mesh and Amateur, and export it. I will export it as Flag Test Tutorial. And then export. Now open up UDK. <coughs> Next one. Oops. Then import the mesh into any package you like. I will import it into the untitled. So import. Choose the mesh. In my case, flag, flag, flag. Flag test tutorial. And just press OK. Now we can see it in here. It isn't very big in my case, but you can scale it up or down as you like. Here it is. Now, go into the skeleton mesh tab, so down here, and go to this box here, Force CPU Skinning. You have to enable this. Then we have to go down, and under Close, and under Close Bones, you have to click onto this plus here, and type in the bone name with the dynamic part. So in my case, bone underscore zero zero one. Here you can see it, bone underscore zero zero one. So in my case, it's that bone here. Wait, whoops. Isn't this broken? Okay. In my case, it's this part here. So bone 1, zero, zero, 1. This part here. This should be dynamic. And now we're finished. Just close this and create the material. So right click, new material. Name, let's say, flag test tutorial underscore mat. And okay. Now choose a texture, or I will just choose anyone, anything. Let's say wood, do we have wood texture? Yeah, this here. Then I will just add it. Then I will yeah, create the normal material. I will just connect this. And down here, you have to check the two sides. You have to check. Because otherwise you, will, you can see through the mesh. So check two sided. And okay. <coughs> Now assign it to your mesh, so, where is it? 
So open up this class mesh editor, select the material, and add it under materials. Okay. Now add a flag to the level. Is this okay? Okay, then we add it like that. So then scale it up or down as you like. In my case, I have to scale it up. Rotate it and go to the property. So just press F4. Then type on like let's type in class. And now you can see here enable class simulation. Just enable this. And down here, class awake on startup. Enable this too. Because now it will rack like class. Now down here, class wind, you can choose the wind strength. I will choose two, three, one. And then we will see if it works. So play from here. Yes. Now what's going on here? Can't save graphic intelligence. Oh my goodness. So probably we have to save it first. Hmm. Okay, so I will be right back. Okay, the problem is now solved and yeah, now I can show you how it will look like. So just play from here. And as you can see, it moves in the wind. Now when we pooped up the wind strength, so go into the properties. Class, class wind. Let's put it up to 20. Let's say 18, and let's say, yeah, that's it, 1. Now let's see what happens. Now it's a very strong wind, as you can see. So just play around with those wind settings. You can make very cool stuff with this close in UDK, and yeah. Thank you for watching, and until next time.